let's look at GC2, a huge standard. And now we're looking at uh, Worksheet 2, which kind of focuses directly on the tangent world. All things about tangents. Now we've already defined what a tangent is earlier, but uh, it is a line that intersects a circle exactly once and only once. And there are some properties or things to know about how they operate. Before I get to that, I want to just talk about a general idea that will help us uh, with a little bit of a proof in a minute. First, um, if you were talking about the distance from this point, we'll call it uh, G, to this line, we'll call it M, and you wanted the shortest distance between that point and that line, would it be this one here? Would you say that's the shortest distance? No, you wouldn't say that. Would you say it is this distance? Shorter, but is it the shortest? No, you wouldn't say that either. And so I might say to you, where along that line would be the shortest distance between G and line M? And I think you would pretty quickly say to me, the perpendicular distance. So if you go the shortest amount right here, the shortest amount, this distance here, will always be that perpendicular distance. And uh, I'm going to use that idea. That's kind of a, a known item. That's something that can be established or is established. But I'm going to use that to kind of uh, tell you a little property, a very important property about the tangent. And that is... If you have a line that is tangent to a circle, and let's say this case is, what's the relationship between this radius, AB, and that line, uh, BC? So let's work it out. Now I'm going to use what's called an inductive argument to prove something. Now the way inductive reasoning works or I mean indirect, not inductive, indirect. An indirect argument basically says you assume the opposite and you approve that that cannot ever happen. So then the reverse of that is the truth. So here's my opposite reversal. I'm going to say that this A to C is shorter than A to B. Now, you'd say, well, it looks different. I don't want that. Tell me a specific reason why A to C is, sh is, is not shorter than A to B. Or maybe tell me why this one, maybe my, my indirect method might say A to D is shorter than A to B. No, that's not true either. And the tendency is to say, oh, because it's just, it it's, it's, looks longer. Well, I like more those students that speak about, some want to tell me about a hypotenuse is always longer. That's not bad. But here's the trick. Notice that these have a radius and a bit more, a bit more. This has a radius and a bit more. This has a radius and no more. It is the shortest distance from A to B. Now, why did, why did that matter? Why is the A to B being the shortest distance from the, this tangent line to this matter? It's because then it must be perpendicular. So this here uh, is perpendicular always in a tangent situation. And we used an indirect argument to do that, which is a little fuzzy for us, but the idea was I assumed the opposite to be true, established that that just never could happen, so the original thing is true. Now what that means is anytime you have a tangent situation, you get a right triangle. And what I want to warn you now is in geometry, right triangles are like gold. You know, they just like 
If you can get a right triangle, we can ask you so many things and make them so much trickier than they should be. And the way we're going to make it trickier is we might, you might need to use the Pythagorean theorem to solve the problem because it's a right triangle. You might need special right triangles, 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45 to do it. How about a little trigonometry? You might see an angle that's not special. It might be 23 degrees or 57 degrees, and you're using trig to get your uh, missing parts. Or even a geometric mean. If you've covered that, there might be a question that involves uh, the proportionality of the geometric mean. So be aware. I'm not going to do lots of those questions now, but I'm just going to warn you they're there. Let me talk about one last thing, is the reverse argument, the converse, which says, how would I know if it is tangent? So they might give you a case like this and say, is the line tangent? So we're not assuming it is, we're trying to prove that it is. Now the cool thing is this, when it's tangent, it's a right angle. So here, I want to see, is that a right angle? And the way you can test it is the Pythagorean theorem. If the Pythagorean theorem works, then that's a right angle. If it doesn't work, it's not a right angle, and that is not a tangent line. What you can't do is go, oh, yay, that looks like it, okay? If the question is asking, is it tangent, you do not assume anything about a right angle there. So what I would do is this radius matches this, so it would go 5 squared plus 8 squared equals 5 and 5 is 10 squared. And I get 25 and 64 equals 100, and I get 89 equals 100. This is a false or non-true statement. So therefore, that is not a tangent line. All right? I should give you a little sense about what tangents are all about. It's about right angles. Be aware of that.